Okay, did he or did he not? <laughs> That's the <laughs> question. That's the question. Did he? <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, everybody. And, and welcome back to this week's episode of the savage podcast. Clearly, I'm very prepared for this. <laughs> guys, guys. Rose is... Uh, my life being shambles. Well, we had a busy, busy weekend. We had a busy weekend. Our friend yeah. came to visit us. Yeah. in calgary our friend from the uk which was really fun she never she, she was on a business trip mm-hmm. in this side of the world and figured well if i'm here in this side of the world might as well come see you guys so she came for only two nights so it was very jam-packed it was we did a okay. lot but it was lovely it was and uh so we had a pretty busy weekend starting from friday you know we did we, we so what did we do friday rose so friday uh was good friday so it was a holiday holiday uh-huh and then what did i have to do i had to do so i was i think i was working during the day you were what were you doing during the oh no i wasn't working during the day friday we had shit going on during the day yep. then we went to go pick up christelle yep then we went to have dinner yep and then we went to have drinks, and while we're drinking, while we're eating, we're eat, having the drinks. Yep. Then we went to Cal- Calgary Tower, which yep. is our, you know, tower. Tower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like every city has a tower. I feel like they do. That like, looks like, like exactly the same as every other city. Yeah. So we have it on those towers, and guys, if you don't know, this is our little hack for anyone that likes to, you know, go to these towers. I don't know if it, this works everywhere. Mm. But in Calgary, I think in most places it does. Like I feel like it makes sense if it has a restaurant. Yeah, up there. most of them have like a restaurant up there, and in Calgary anyway, if you book the restaurant, you don't have to pay entrance to get to the tower. Yeah, and you don't necessarily have to eat there. Like I never eat there because they don't really have much for vegan options. It's true. So I just get drinks, <laughs> but it's like nice because like you know the entrance is quite expensive. Yeah. So really, you can just use that money and to actually, get yourself a drink. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like I I, I always forget because I haven't because I hadn't actually been to the Calgary Tower restaurant for a really long time. Yeah. And then I went last year with a friend um, that was like visiting. And we, I always recommend. Yeah. And it, honestly, even like the, when we went Friday, I was like, it's so I just nice. forget. Oh, and I went when my other friend was visiting as well. <clears throat> and I and it's it's just you get such a nice view of the city. And actually, it's a pretty nice other than them having like no vegan options, which is yeah. s- shitty. Um, well, actually, they do have a vegan option, but it is like not French good. French fries. Oh, no, do they have? What do they have? They, they had, if I recall correctly, and I could be thinking somewhere else, but I'm sure it was the Calgary Tower restaurant. It was like a cauliflower steak. Oh, of course it was. What? Okay, I'm gonna go on a rant. <laughs> go on a rant, Rose. What is with people? Listen, I appreciate a vegan option, mm-hmm. but <sighs> my friends, and I know if you like most most people listening are probably vegan, yeah. or at least like vegan aware. Yeah. I just don't understand how people don't get that cauliflower is not a meal. Okay. Yeah. It is a side dish. It is a vegetable. Just because someone is vegan does not mean we can survive mm. on cauliflower. We need actual calories, protein, carbs, just like actual food and actual calories. Don't give us a vegetable as a vegan option. That is not a vegan option. That is a vegetable. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was what they gave me. <laughs> At least at the it's time. It's always like this. I know. I know. they. I think they rotate their, oh. their menus or, or something. But I just, I do remember specifically going, I got the cauliflower steak. And I just remember being like, afterwards, I was still so hungry. Of course you were. And you probably spent like $30 on it. It was $30. Oh. And I was like, what the fuck? What is this it's bullshit? Always, it's always cauliflower. It's always fucking eggplant. Or you know what else it is? Carrots. Risotto. Okay. Well, at least risotto is a little bit more filling. This is true. Okay. But it's, it's usually not risotto. I, I see, Well, maybe that was more in the UK, but I remember always the, the, the vegan option. Was and risotto? I, and I, at one point I was like, okay, no more. I'm really? not having any more of this bullshit. Okay. I actually prefer risotto over cauliflower. Yes. Because at least I'll be somewhat fuller. Yeah. For at least 30 minutes, whereas cauliflower, mm. not even 20 minutes. You forgot the fourth option, Rose. They'll have a... Beyond Burger. Beyond Burger. <laughs> <laughs> that, again, like, would prefer that. But yeah. still, now it's like, it's getting to the point where it's like every place has a Beyond Burger. It's crazy. Like, I... I um I uh, one of my friends was here also from from Nigeria and I like took him out for lunch right. and like again 
why is it always and it was like the only thing on the menu and i was like okay well i guess i'm gonna get beyond burger like yeah as always because now people just like they slap it on as the vegan option yeah whereas they don't have to think about it at least it's filling but still it's kind of like you're kind of like okay and don't get me wrong i don't want to sound like i'm complaining too much but like i do love a beyond i love a beyond burger like if i'm having like actually i think wasn't it for you that i did like a beyond burger with like peanut sauce on it oh yeah that was really good and you can make them so good burger but it's like I don't want to eat a Beyond Burger Everywhere. in every single fucking restaurant. I know. Like, it, ah! I know. I, and I like, it's so... Add a bean in there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Add a fucking bean. Get some tofu. Yeah. Slice that shit up. Marinate it in something. Keep it in the freezer. Mm-hmm. And then just like fucking take it out when it's when a vegan comes in, okay? <laughs> like, it is cheaper than cauliflower, my friends. Mm. And it's actually filling. I know. It's so ridiculous. I need to start a fucking movement. Okay. Because this annoys the living crap out of me. I know. Well, no, you're not (laughs) the only one, Rose. You know how many Beyond Burgers I've had in my lifetime now? Thanks, thanks, to Cal- <laughs> thanks to Calgary. I don't know if it's just a Calgary thing. I think maybe it's like around Canada more yeah. so now, but like literally in Calgary. I think it's, I think it's like North American yeah. situation. Anywhere I go now, it's like, it's almost as if they've, the, the restaurant industry now because of the Beyond Burger. And again, I don't want to throw shakes. I, lo- yeah, I, I, I love know. a Beyond Burger, but I think because of it, they've almost like taken a step back being like, oh, we're we, not going to get creative. We don't have to get creative and create a vegan thing because yeah. we'll just slap a Beyond Burger but on But then it. you know what the sad part is? Sometimes I prefer that because other, the other option would be fucking cauliflower. Yeah, a cauliflower fucking steak. Because I'm so, like, call, I'm sorry, just because you grill a cauliflower does not make it a steak. And you, listen, you can call a cauliflower steak, mm. but just because you call it a steak, doesn't mean it's filling. No, okay? ex- exactly. It's a exactly. fucking vegetable. Okay. If you are not full off eating cauliflower, a vegan is not going to be full off eating cauliflower. Exactly. Please, please add some tofu. Please put some beans. Okay. Yeah. End of my rant. So <laughs> other than the food options there for vegans, it's actually, <laughs> uh, it's actually such a nice restaurant. Like it I love is. going up there and like even just the views and like, it'll be so nice to go on a date there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So very lovely. Yeah. It's just like a nice, and, and because it rotates, you like, you just yes. kind of get views of the city and actually like even just not even the fact that it oh, rotates, it's just like a nice ambiance. Yeah. There. It's a nice ambiance and yeah, mm. you get the view and nighttime is nice as well, but daytime is also really yeah. nice. Cause like you can see the nice view and if it's sunny out, it's beautiful. So yes, we did that. Yeah. Then we had more drinks, which we clearly <laughs> None didn't of us need needed. to do. Yep. And then the next day we went to the mountains. So we what did we do before we went to the mountains, Rose? We Oh, we went to my cafe to have a little brunch, mm-hmm. a hungover brunch. Yep. We ordered food for probably six people, ate it all, yep. maybe five people. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I would say, but I was, I was going to say but maybe the, four people because I feel like there was four meals. Maybe there was four meals, but also like Christelle didn't eat much. Right. So we basically ate for like four. Meals. <laughs> yeah. So we ate two meals each. Yeah. That's but I mean, true. that's, that's our usual this know, is very day true. in the life. So yeah. had that. Then we went to Banff, which mm-hmm. is, if you don't know, Banff National Park is a little town in the Canadian Rockies in yeah. Alberta. And uh, it's beautiful. It is. They've made some changes though. So we, we went to Lake Louise and like one of the nice things to do or another life hack, which is really <laughs> fun, is like you go to like a big city or wherever and instead of paying the price to stay at the nice hotel, go there for drinks, you know, like get to get to see the Oh, ambiance. you mean the hotel. Yeah. And, yes. Uh, and the Chateau and the Lake Travel Louise. Hack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, it's only open now for, for guests. So. Oh, so the Lake Louise. Okay. So first yeah. we went to Lake Louise, which is uh, beautiful. It's mm-hmm. very, very touristy. And uh, we were going to have a little drink there, but then the, yeah, the little bar area is yeah. like, you know reserved for guests which i kind of understand i get it just because the, the volume annoying. of tourists yeah so we were that we did that and then we went to banff we ate at this restaurant called nourish which is a vegetarian restaurant yep that was great and then we did the Bam- banff hot springs that was busy as fuck busy as hell and when we left there was <laughs> yeah. a line up out the door and then we <laughs> and then we had a drink at the rim rock hotel yeah which was again nice and yes that's a travel hack yeah so if you guys are traveling and you want to do like a slightly nice thing, mm. but you don't want to spend the money, stay at a regular ass hotel and yep. then just go to a nice hotel, like a bougie hotel. Cause you can always go into like almost always, yeah. you can go to the lobby and the bar there yeah. or even the restaurant and then have a little drink. Exactly. And the, and the one of the rim rock, it was kind of nice cause it's perched on the side of the mountain kind of. So yeah. you get like a beautiful mm-hmm. view. Ugh. They had like a, a live band playing. A live music. Yeah. yeah it was so nice. I was like, God, the ambiance I here. Know. And then we kept like looking up. We're like, ooh, I wonder how much it is to stay it was in these hotels. 50, what was it? Eight hundred dollars a night? Nine hundred dollars a night? Something like that. Which now again, which is which is insane. But that doesn't even sound that crazy to me nowadays. I know because if you go to like 
a city nowadays, oftentimes a hotel is like what three four hundred dollars a night, and that's just a regular hotel. Which is in this, it, this is know. just blowing my mind. That's for one fucking one night. night just to sleep. You don't even get twenty four hours. I know because you have to check in at like what three, and then you have to get out by like eleven or twelve. Yes, ridiculous. It's, it is actually like blows my mind, and especially if you're like if you're staying for like an extended period of time, it's like the cost of the accommodation now. I know. It's absolute insanity. It's crazy. I know. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> we can't travel anymore. What are we going to do? No, I haven't got to rain, rain my fucking life in. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really fun weekend. It was really busy though. So we're both like, just like, even today, I've had today off work, thank God, which was kind of nice. And yeah. I like kind of a little bit of a sleep in, um, but it, oh, I, mean, I still just feel like. I know. Pretty tired. Life is too much. We it's, can't do too much. Too much. Too much. Anyway, guys, we have... A, oh, my God. We just went on a fucking... We did. Tangent. We did. We've got two new patrons. If you guys don't know, we have our Patreon family. If you guys want to join, it's patreon.com slash the savage podcast. And what do you get, Rose? You get bonus episodes every single month just for the Patreon members. So we mm-hmm. do one episode per month, and it's always a fun time. Yep. You get ad-free content. No ads for you. And you get every episode a week earlier than everybody else. So if you guys want to join, it's patreon.com slash the savage podcast. And you also get a shout out. Yes. So shout outs to Sophie and Cheyenne mm-hmm. for joining the Patreon family, you guys. So yeah, well, welcome thank to you the so much. Okay. So All shall right. we delve into the stories? So this story is kind of, I don't want to say it's old, but it's a, it's a, a it's, re- a story. it's resurfacing. It's a, it, it's a recent development. Yes. Okay. So, which we basically we want to talk about it because we actually we're talking about it in the car, yeah. and Daniel found it fascinating as well. Did I, I mention it before or I, no? I, no. The thing is, I I I don't know where I heard it. It probably was from you. I thought we talked about it in the podcast. I don't think we. I, don't, <laughs> I, I honestly don't think we have. So, guys, we may or may not have talked about Did it in we? the podcast. I thought we had, but then I don't know. We could have not. How could I not remember though? I mean, I guess I don't, I don't, we I talk d- about a lot of things. True, and I don't remember a lot. So and, and we drink a lot. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we talked about it before, but this is like a thing that's been going on. Yeah, it's a thing in South Korea, my home country. Mm. Okay, and we know we know how much love, love love we know how much Rose loves talking about South Korea. Listen, so. I love South Korea. But because because it is my home country, I'm very concerned for yes. this country. Yes. Okay. For the future and the state of my country. Okay. So mm-hmm. the current situation. Now, I don't know how much you guys know. Obviously, South Korea from the outside might look really glamorous. Mm. You know, it's got K-pop, K-dramas, K-movies. Very successful. GDP is high. Yeah. People look pretty. All that stuff. Um, but there's a lot underneath that's yeah. quite uh, problematic. Would and you, what would you say in the underbelly? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it called like the underbelly? Is it called the underbelly? Like, well, no, that's more for like I think like drug trade and stuff like this. Is, <laughs> like the seedy yeah. underbelly. You May, know? Oh, I, like it's more so just like a societal. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of societal issues. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons is because it just developed so quickly like in a very short period of time and people didn't catch up people didn't catch up the society didn't catch up Mm. um and for for a country this small to develop so fast in terms of economically uh culturally that you know if you actually think about it is a very unnatural progression which doesn't come without a cost yeah and i think the cost is people are (laughs) overworked they're depressed they're tired they're not you know, they're not taking care of themselves. Yeah. And one of the things also, because again, Korea is quite conservative because again, it hasn't had time to like, you know, develop into a more, you know, progressive society. Mm. It's quite conservative. So the misogyny in Korea is quite strong. The interesting thing though, too, because like I, we did talk about this the other day when we were like, I think when we were driving out to, <clears throat> to Banff and stuff. Yeah. And the interesting thing is you're right. Like I think with Korea, maybe the problem's more exacerbated because it's, you know, it, 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 it advanced and developed in such a short period of time. But, and, 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 you know, like other places, maybe they've been developing over a, like a kind of longer period of time, yes. but it's interesting because a lot of these, these things that we're going to talk about, um, I think that we're also facing societal issues and challenges right. in almost the same space, but just <clears> maybe <throat> not quite as extreme as South Korea yet. Oh, right. You mean like in other countries? Yes. Yes, I yeah. think so. I think Korea is like the extreme example. Yeah. Uh, but like, for example, one thing that's been happening kind of globally is the rise in conservative men. I yes. think we talked about that before. Yeah, we definitely have. Like the Andrew yes. Tates. And exactly. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's something that's kind of happening globally. Now, I don't know if that's... I think it has also increased in Korea as well. Yeah. Which already it was bad. Let me yeah. tell you. Okay. It was never like good. It was never a fair society for women. Yeah. 
but it's gotten even worse because I think with all of these issues, and again, we've talked about this before, but like mm. all of these issues happening, you know, due to extreme capitalism, extreme yeah. poverty, you know, but disparity. I, I agree. Uh-huh. And, I, and I think also like there's just been this fundamental societal shift globally whereby, and we've talked about this before as well. It's like, you know, the expectation on women in the past was, okay, they mm. need, they need to keep the home and, and, and take care right. of the kids. Well, that's, you know, still it's kind of not fine, but like, that's fine if you don't work and you're, yeah. you can stay at home mm-hmm. and you can, you know, do all those things. Great. Mm-hmm. But once the like society, you know, changed and now it's the fact that we both have to be the ones working. Yeah. Like men and women or whoever. It's like the expectation that they still maintain the house, mm-hmm. do all the cooking, the cleaning, <clears throat> the kids like that needs to change. Like men yeah. need to see, step the fuck up yeah, and be like, you know what? In, unless you're earning enough for everybody, which very few people are mm-hmm. and your mom, your mom, your, your wife is a stay at home mom. I think that there's no, there's no ground like at all to stand yeah. on, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And that's still a thing in Korea. And so what's happening in South Korea right now mm. is in order to, well, already Korea was experiencing low birth rates because of many issues. For example, you know, it's too expensive to raise a child. Right. It's very competitive in South Korea. So like if you have a child, you have to put them in like all kinds of extracurricular activities right. and you kind of have to do it almost. Otherwise, like your child's going to be really fucking behind. Yeah. And so it costs so like it already costs a lot of money to have a child. But in yeah. South Korea, it's even more. So that's one factor. People are just very like stressed out. Like when are they going to have time to, you know, date and have kids and all that stuff. They can barely, you know, survive on their own. Yeah. But this 4B movement, which is a kind of a, I don't know when this kind of originated, or I guess it originated in 2019, but it's gaining a lot of traction. Yeah. So this is a feminist movement, uh, which is basically the reason why it's called 4Bs is because in Korean, like basically the first like there's a term B, so it, you, you say B in Korean, and that yeah. kind of means like no, like you're not like so basically, no sex, no uh, child rearing, no dating, and no marriage. So that's the four Bs. So no the sex, four no's. no sex, no uh, like birthing children, no dating, and no marriage. So that's the four B movement. So basically, because women are very tired of this Mm. extreme patriarchy, extreme misogyny, they're like, well, we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah. (laughs) We're not going to involve ourselves anymore. Mm. It's almost to the point where they're like, it's kind of sad because it's like they're just going to give up. Yeah. Like there's no hope, essentially. Right, right, right. It's not like, oh, we need to change these men and, you know, let them see a better. No, they're just like, fuck this. Right. So even if a man that is a little bit more changed and everything, I is guess like, so, goes with tries to get with a woman that's part of the four B movement, she's then I guess say, there's no chance. She's gonna say no. I guess so. I guess that's probably what it is. God damn. I mean, I don't know. Like, that's ex- like I feel it like, is extreme, but it's an extreme society. Yes. Yeah. And I see that. And I think probably you're right. I think probably Korean women are getting so frustrated, yeah. right? And just to, to the point where it's like, okay, this is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Like, these men, and actually it's funny because I think we, we saw quite a lot of this, yeah. this kind of, I, I'm not idea, but like what women are dealing with in Korea on um, Squid Game. So if you remember right. that like mom with her son and the son is like a typical guy, like just, you know, you know, not, well, I don't know if it's a typical guy, but like. Oh, you mean the main character? Yeah. And he was just being like a, like a fucking low what? life loser? Yes. Yes. And he was like <laughs> expecting this and he was just like being. Right. Know, expecting everything to be done for him. Sure. And like just. Honestly. Yeah. POS. So then I've been seeing a lot of people talking about this. And mm-hmm. I think even like people outside of Korea are like, oh my God, we need to, <laughs> we need to do this movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's kind of sad because it's like we've given up on men. men. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially, but, 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 but maybe the whole point of this is with this extreme, right? This extreme movement. Yeah. It's like saying, okay, well. You change or, or this is no what we're sex, gonna... no marriage, no kids. Exactly. Men need to step it up. And like I, we can't, we keep saying this time and time again. Like for example, like and I, I don't get it. Like I'm a man myself, obviously a little different. I'm in the gay community, whatever. Yeah. But it's like, and I'm single. So like I have to do everything myself, right? Like clean my house. I do all this. Yes. But even when I get into a relationship, I am not going to expect the other person to like, 
do everything. Do everything for I me. I know. Like, I mean, you know, it's a give and take, right? Like, you know, if we go like hiking, Rose makes the food and I bring the coffee, you <laughs> exactly. know? Exactly. And it's I drive. It's a team effort. Exactly. So, it like, should you, be a partnership and a team effort. Exactly. I'm not going to be like, you know what? I'm just going to show up. Yeah. You drive, you pack, you do the coffee, yeah. you do everything. I'm just, you pick the route. Yeah. I'm just going to show up. Like, you'll be like, hey, well, yeah. we're not going hiking again. Like, <laughs> fuck you. Like, like, but it's, it's like little things like this. So I don't get, and I know there are some men out there that are getting better. Of, of course. And, and not, of course, not all men, you yeah. know, obviously. Yeah. But I think, you know. The sad thing is I think it's the majority. It, well, that's, I mean, especially in South yeah. Korea, which is why this is happening. Mm. And it, it does it, like, and it has a history. Like this article says, basically, you know, um, some people's decision not to marry was influenced by seeing how th- her mother and grandmother have been treated as right. subordinates in her family, which yeah. definitely is a case. Like even like literally just my parents' generation, very, very, you know, yeah, like women are treated very differently Mm. and grandmother of course like women get no respect yeah so it's very you know and it's a tradition it's continued on like it hasn't changed it's only gotten worse probably because now women have like you said all these other responsibilities not just house yeah but because the expectation is that they still take care of the house and everything else yeah basically women are take uh are giving 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 and like they're not getting anything yeah so they're saying fuck this well exactly and like i mean i'm sorry but i would be doing the same (laughs) if if all the men in my life were fucking users and abusers and expect me to do everything i'm like oh god i might might join this movement right (laughs) you know just for myself yeah so i don't know it's quite interesting because i want to know because the thing is like I feel like I don't think it's going to get any better Mm. because I feel like because of this, men are going to be even more extreme Extreme. rather than reflecting and being like, okay, should I be a better person or should men, you know, step up? Should we treat women equally? You know, all this stuff. I feel like they're going to go more extreme. Yeah. How sad is this? It says, and I didn't even realize that the stats were this mm. high, this high, but this is well. I mean, I think this is just more. It says ranks Korea blah 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 blah. blah. An article in South Korean newspaper reported that sixty five percent of women in the country oh do not want children. Some forty two percent do not want to get married, and over eighty percent of those. So of those percentages, eighty <gasps> percent right citing domestic violence as their key reason. So 40 something percent of women don't want to get married and with over 80 percent of those citing. That so do not so get, out of the 42 percent of women, which is quite a significant that number. That don't want to get married. Yeah. That don't want to get married. Over 80 percent of them are saying domestic violence is, is the their reason. key reason. Yeah. That's and, fucked up. But even better. Well, not even better. Mm. Worse. The 65 percent of the women. Are, uh, they women don't want children. Don't want children. Oh, no, sorry. You're no. right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So 65% of the women, which means a, a pretty large majority, yeah. don't want children. And again, I, again, in a, in a, if I was growing up in this particular society, and we're in this, like, where we are, but, like, and if this was the way that the society was working, and I just knew if I get a child, it's going to break me financially, I'm going to be mm. responsible for another person, and now I'm going to have to watch two children, because <laughs> my husband as well. Oh, my God. Why would Why the fuck would I have a kid? But it's really fascinating to me because, like, totally, I mm. exactly what you're saying. But it's so fascinating because Korea, again, like I said, is quite conservative and has been conservative. So, like, it's a very kind of, like, I would not expect this movement right. to happen in a conservative society because that's so insane to me. But at the same time, it makes sense. And I think it's people, I think the the the, the ultimate... Um but 65% of women. I know. But I think ultimately what's behind this is they're getting pushed to the limit. Totally. Right? Like you get, you push enough people to the limit and they will 65% yeah. and they'll be like, you know what? Fuck this. And also what's fascinating is that Korean dramas, Korean movies are all very much centered around romance yeah. and love. And obviously it's all very fantasy, very non-realistic yeah. men don't actually act like that in Korea. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, it's a, that's like romantic things are very mm. emphasized in South Korea. So that's another reason why I find it quite surprising. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not surprising. <laughs> God damn. What do you, you think is going to happen? You know what I think would really help these situations? And I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to like brainstorm ideas of where, how we as a society as, as a whole can move forward from this. Because you know what? Korea might be the first doing this, but you know what? The U.S. and Canada are not far behind. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, God damn. Yeah, people are talking about it. Yeah. So like, this is the thing. So what do we do as a society? And I think one one thing I was just like thinking out loud. Yeah. One thing that we could do, which and we've talked about this before in the podcast as well, is we could start instating or changing um, like curriculum for like young young mm. young men and women and women together but where i was going with that is we and we've talked about this before with like the importance of even like um young men and women too but like talking about their feelings and being more open and you know maybe having like um you know some kind of sessions like that but also like discussing and talking about how society has changed at a young age Mm -hmm. and getting rid of the gender stereotype roles like you know oh women are cooking and like you know in in all the like because I even think about it and and it's 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 like from when we were in school it was even in like the stuff that we were consuming like if you remember if we were reading a book you'll always see mom at the stove and dad coming back with this yeah tie it's like that media needs to change it Mm -hmm. needs to be completely thrown out the window or if the teacher is using that they can say actually it can be either. The man can yes. also be when they're young, when they're really young. So they learn that actually, because because part of our problem too, and I think because maybe me and you talk about this so much, we're a little bit more like, you know. Yeah. But like even from going through school, think about how much subliminal messages oh, yeah. there were on what a woman is and what a man, like totally. even, even for careers, like, yeah. like nursing. Yeah. Men don't do nursing. Uh-huh. Like whenever you hear of a nurse. It's emasculating. Or, exactly. So, so things like this it needs to start from the bottom, like really, really young age. And I think that will, it's not going to change it completely, but yeah. it will help a little bit. I think. Right. You're right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So Korean population is the lowest fertility rate mm. in the world. So with women having less than, less than one child on average, this is fucked because my parents' generation was the baby boomer generation. Right. So they're aging. And by the time you know, they need all the social support and all these things. There gets, there's going to be a huge amount of old people mm. and it's already a huge problem, but not enough young people to refill the workforce. Mm-hmm. There's going to be, a, there's a lot of countries that are in that situation. It, it's a big, big Japan, problem. Oh, Japan Korea. for sure. Japan and Korea has similar problems, yeah. but different, slightly different reasonings, but yeah. kind of similar issues. Yeah. So it's like, but and yeah. then this is only going to make matters worse. Right? Well, and I of- saw this one TikTok. And this guy, I think he was like a Twitch streamer or something. Yeah. And he was like talking about something along these lines. Like, yeah. you know, what are we going to do if women are saying we're, you know, basically women are joining the 4B movement in yeah. like mass scale. And the guy on the phone, he I guess he had called into this TikTok guy. He was like, well, you know, at some point it's going to have to be like an ethical, like a decision for us to continue the human race, which by the way, I think is a stupid fucking argument. Oh my God. I just got chills. You're making me think Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Oh my God. So he God. basically brought it like the guy, the tr- Twitch guy, he was like, um, so are you saying that you like basically like, yeah, are you, do you want like a Handmaid's Tale kind of situation or whatever? And the guy was like, it's a, basically his perspective was like, it's our moral imperative. It's our moral duty to continue the human race, which I think is dumb. Yeah. There's no fucking moral duty to, to continue the fucking no. human race. We're actually a parasite to this planet. Thank you very much. And then the guy was like, so are you saying then it, let's say it went down to like a thousand people. Um, are you saying that it is okay for women to be raped? Yeah. And then he was like, well, if we need to continue the human race, like oh somebody locked that know, guy up. No, but you know what's scary, Rose? Cause you know, how you a were, lot of men think like this. You know how you're saying this 4B movement is mm-hmm. like a, kind of an extreme movement and you think right, that it's going to make pendulum. men go the other way more extreme. Right. <sighs> Oh, I got chills. We're going to oh, start cutting their dicks off. That's not, that's <laughs> not good. I know. Like that, that guys, that really, I didn't, oh God. I oh. know. Oh God. Oh, it actually. How many times you watch the Hamas tail? Too many times. Too many times. That's why it's like such a front lobal re- global so you front lobe it, reference. Like you watched it like the entirety. So this is yeah. This is the thing. Do you think I should? Because I watched like first two seasons mm. and then I stopped. Oh, you definitely need to watch all of it. Do I need to watch all of it? But it's fucking. It's dark so as dark. Fuck. I don't know if I can handle. I know because like basically everyone was like, I remember when Handmaid's Tale was kind of a thing. Well, it, I was telling you about it initially. You, you were. Because I remember you'd always be like, "May the Lord open." You know, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Blessed Rose? be the fruit. Yeah. Under his eye. <laughs> um, and I was like, and it was funny because we'd like, like laugh about it and yeah. stuff, but I was like, I had no reference there. And then yeah. finally I got Crave. Actually it was recently like last year or something. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm finally going to go through and I'm going to start watching this, uh, watching the Handmaid's Tale. I would say overall it, it, it can be a little bit slow yes. at times. Like I think they could have condensed some things. Mm-hmm. But overall, it's so crazy. It's it is well done. Okay. Um, and it gets 
There are some, oh, there's some great moments that happen later right. in the series. Okay. Like season one, season two. So dark. Season three. Oh my God. There's this amazing thing that happens though. And it's like, okay. It's this, it's a Do beautiful you cry? moment. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I cry like I mean, every episode, basically. Oh, God. But I do think like, and there's supposed to be like a season six, like a final season I think they're supposed to make. Right. Something? There's only five. Um, but I I ended up, and I do this quite often with shows, not all the time, but like, um, what was that? Game of Thrones was another one. I didn't even start watching it until oh, it I was already the on the like six or seven season. And then I just watched it you all. You just binge it all. Yeah. yeah that's how I usually yeah. do it. That's what I did with When Handmaid's. it's going on, I'm just like, ugh. <sighs> I don't want to join in on this movement. Mm. And then like years later, I watch like fucking, um, what's the fuck? What's the one with dr- the drugs? The um, Narcos? No, not Narcos. Uh, Heisenberg. Fuck. Oh, uh, bad. Uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Yeah. That I watched like years later. And, and then I, like, I watched bi- it with you yeah, years And then I later. just binged the crap out of it. Oh, another good, I kind of want to rewatch it. I know. It's such a good show. Like, I feel like that I'll never get sick of rewatching. I know. I'd like, there's, sh- there's some show, some shows, some, guys. There's some shows. Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Shit's Creek's another one I could rewatch. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Handmaid's Tale, but just not right now because <laughs> I've just seen it too much. And this, this actually really scares me. I know. Like not that the, f- I understand why women are doing this in South Korea, but like that comment that the you just made. The pendulum swing. Yeah. That's where this conservative Andrew Tate kind of guys are going to go. Like they're going to be like, well, it's our moral obligation to, to, to create the human race. And actually this whole situation, not situation, but I watched uh, a movie the other night. Oh God, Daniel. I was really stoned. Oh no! I didn't watch it all. My roommate was watching it, and then I came was in a little K? bit later. What was it, Daniel? It was like it was with Matt Damon, and everyone gets shrunk into little people. Have you seen it? <laughs> no. So basically, the world is. It's. I'll give you guys a quick premise, and then we'll move on to the next story. Okay. Because I feel like we've been rambling. Um, <laughs> but like, basically, the world gets to a point where they're like, shit. Like, if we don't do something soon, we're gonna. The environment's gonna be fucked. Right. So they came up with this way that we could actually make people like tiny. Mm. So, and it was a way that we could have this many people on the planet. We so could they use less resources. Exactly. So they ha- they started these small cities and people would like decide to become small or not depending. Oh my God. Yeah. So like Matt Damon and his wife were supposed to both go, go small to like, you know, help the environment and also like, you what know, is it called? I'll, I'll tell you. I okay. can't remember what it's called. Is it but new? Yeah, it's pretty new. Okay. Right? Continue. Um, anyway, I want to watch it. It was good. I don't want to tell you the okay, this, don't this tell bit me. then. Yeah, because there's like a there's a pitiable thing that happens at the end, and it is a yeah. Don't ruin it. Yeah, it's a question that you have to ask yourself. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and you have do to. Do I want to do this for the human race? What would I do in this situation? Would I do this? Right. Would I go? Would I do B? Would I go would through I door B small? or do your door A? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So so. Anyway, really good film. It's a bit weird. Like, there's a lot of weird shit that happens. Also, I was really stoned when I watched it. <laughs> yeah, you so need I was to just like, you need rewatch it in uh, your proper state of I mind. I know, because I was just like, kind of like, what's going on here? Like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> um, but there was some really Where funny things. Where was it on? Netflix? Netflix. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So That sounds interesting. I love, like, random movies like that. Oh, uh, and it was random. Matt Damon loves, like... Because he also... Had, wasn't he also in that movie where there was, like, a different planet? So, I think it was Matt Damon. Mm. this movie it was one of those movies where I feel like the idea was great but I didn't really like the execution as much yeah but basically so he's living on planet earth and planet earth this is like in the future right fuck shit's fucked was up it now. like Martian or something it was it had no it wasn't Martian I think it started with an E mm. but it had like a like a space name oh okay because basically they, there was like a new planet mm. so on earth everyone's fucked okay like it's you know, shit's gone, shit's hit the fan, essentially. Yep. And the environment's fucked. People are poor. Like, they don't have anything. Yep. So everyone is trying to escape to this other planet. Right. Where, you know, th- it's prosper and they got all kinds of resources, but only, like, the rich people have gone of course. there. So then <laughs> it's kind of like a metaphor for, like, for example, like, the states and, like, mm-hmm. the, the border issue. Right. Where people on the, in the south, like, in Mexico are trying to, like, escape to the border. Yeah. But they're not letting. So it's kind of like that. And anyway, so I feel like Matt Damon like really likes Those films like films. this, yeah. which, you know, I appreciate as well. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. God damn. So that's the 4B movement. Let us know what you think of this movement. Would you join it? <laughs> Would you say, fuck all men, yep. not going to get married and not going to have kids and not going to date and not going to have sex? Yep. Well, that's kind of my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to join a movement for it, oh guys. My That's gosh. my existing state. But you know what's interesting, though? It's so interesting that for women, 
you know, that's, this is like the power, mm. you know, this is how they reclaim their power, which is very interesting. Yeah. So like just being like, we're not going to just participate. Yeah. And it's funny because again, we are always told as women that we want to be the ones that get married. We're the ones that are desperate for a ring that are mm-hmm. desperate for kids that, you know, you know, want male affection and attention. Right. And then women in South Korea are just like, actually not really. Yeah. And actually, actually 65% of us don't want kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually men, like, I Suck. feel like, <laughs> I feel like because, okay, because of like, uh, yeah. So we're always told like, we're desperate. We, we want all of this, but really, again, like we said before, it's like a projection from men because yeah. usually men are the ones that can't handle not having a woman or yeah. not having marriage and not having ki- maybe yeah. kids. They're fine, yeah. but like sex and stuff like that, yeah, like, yeah. which is why the incel movement is the movement of the men incel movement, involuntary celebrate. Have you heard of this? I have not heard of this one. You haven't heard of the incel movement? No. God damn it. You really don't spend time on the internet. I, I spend some time, just not as much so as you. So incel <laughs> is like, a, it's, it's oh, like involuntary celibate. Like yes, they're, involuntary. they're celibate, but they don't want to be. Exactly. As in they can't get laid. Yeah. It's kind of like we were saying, there's like a virgin pandemic in the Exactly. States, so this is a huge thing that's been going on for like the past, uh, I don't know. It's been a while. It's been yeah. years since I've heard this term. And th- this is fascinating because again, like we talked about, it's kind of like, Instead of being like, okay, why don't I improve myself? Why don't I, yeah. you know, become nicer to women? Or like, yeah. why don't I treat women with respect? Why don't I, you know, go out and, you know, you know, work out and like be decent, uh, be a decent human being, yeah. you know, participate in activities, be a member of community. That's too hard, Rose. <laughs> Instead People of doing that, lazy. they join this involuntary celibate movement Mm. where it's like a very toxic kind of, you know, women are basically blaming women for all their problems and saying like, Oh, women only want these like hot guys that are, which is just untrue. Women only want these like really hot guys with like beautiful bodies that are like dicks to them, blah, blah, blah. But like, they don't want anyone that's like below that. Mm. So they just like blame everything on the women. Yeah. So, yeah, that's Instead another. Instead of being like, hey, maybe I can do some stuff to improve my chances. Exactly. And like maybe I have a clean house. I yeah, like maybe do I, things. you know, take a shower once in a while, yes. you know, brush my teeth, get some teeth, cl- teeth whitener. Yeah. The thing is like the amount of shaming that women get for our looks and like men, they do the bare minimum and expect a fucking Megan Fox looking person. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Somebody, I saw some video where someone was like, listen, the audacity of this man. I know. <laughs> Not that he's like horrible, but like, come on. But now. come on. Like, you really thought of Megan Fox? Like, if he, I'm um, guys, I'm, and this is going to sound a little bit mean, but like, if he came, if he was exactly how he is, I'm talking personality We're talking as about well. Love is blind, if you guys don't know. Jimmy from Love is blind. Yes. Personality wise, no, thank you. <laughs> Looks wise, no, thank you. Like, if you came up to me at a bar, yeah. I'd be like, no. <laughs> You'd be a harsh man. I would be a harsh man. God damn, Daniel. Especially to Jimmy. He needs it. Well, maybe if he was like a very nice person, but gentleman, he, he was just very, he wasn't like a bad person. Yeah. He was just very like, blah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nothing special going on. No. Anyway, guys, if you want to watch that uh, or listen to the Love is Blind episode, that is out. Mm. And it's like two hours long, isn't it? It is. It's quite entertaining. So if two you haven't long. watched, God damn. if you haven't uh, watched Love is Blind. Season six. Season six. Watch the whole season and then listen to our yeah. very entertaining episode. And speaking of entertainment. Oh, industry, my God. God, oh I can't God. believe we went on this, this long without talking about this story. This is... A mic drop moment, guys. Mic this drop is, I mean, not mic drop in a good way either. Like, just like so crazy. Sean Diddy Combs, also known as Puff Daddy, also known as P Diddy. How many fucking names does this also guy have? Also, just known known as Diddy. Diddy. Did he do it? Oh my god! <laughs> I think he did it. <laughs> did he do it? <laughs> oh my god! So oh my god. <laughs> I never thought of that before. Diddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he did it, Diddy. <laughs> Oh my god, you know what that reminds me of? What does it remind you of? Do you remember that TikTok of like uh the really deep southern accent? Oh my god. When they would say like the most random yes! shit, but I it need would to be refine so- that TikTok. Me too. It was so fucking Anyways, funny. So but this Diddy. is one of those. Diddy. 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 <laughs> Daniel's ha- has having his moment. Oh, I can't. Okay. So, guys, it's a very serious situation is, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, apparently, so I saw this like random story come up. Yeah. And basically, Sean Diddy Combs <laughs> is facing a host of legal issues. Like 
Yeah. Like a shit ton. So yeah. I heard that it was like sex trafficking. So there's there's so many different stories I've heard, right? I heard the sex trafficking one. So I heard partially that. There was um, another famous artist that came forward. So Cassie. Yes, I heard of this. Yeah, so she's the one that sings that uh, Me and You song or something. Yeah, she sings a few famous songs. Yeah, and she was really big, I think, in like the late 2000s, like 2006, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2007-ish. And she came forward. She's like, I was groomed by like Diddy. Like... And she was saying that I think there was some some physical abuse some that physical happened. Physical abuse, yes. yeah. And so basically, what happened recently was that law enforcement raided his homes. Okay, because mm-hmm. obviously he's like rich as fuck. Yeah. So like his homes got raided. Like FBI is involved. Fucking hell. There's like a huge kind of, and I heard it was to do with sex trafficking. Okay. Yeah. So it says here, authorities searched Diddy's homes on Monday because he is a target of a federal investigation carried out by the Department of Homeland Security team that handles human trafficking crimes. And guys, I'm not saying that this is like, you know, obviously innocent until proven guilty. Of course. But usually when the government, the federal government is raiding your house, Mm -hmm. they got some evidence on you. They've been watching you for a while. Yeah. They've been waiting to do this. This is the this is the thing. You have to think of it like this. Typically, and I'm I'm not again just fine because sometimes the government does some fucked up shit. Um, but typically if they're raiding your house, they do have to have a warrant. Yes. And you have to get a warrant from like a judge, I believe. Mm -hmm. They have to like present a case. Yeah. And if your case isn't strong enough, generally the judge is not gonna grant your warrant. Mm -hmm. So there had to have been some some reason or some reason to believe that he was doing these things. Um also what really sketches me out though, and I've uh, like again, I've I don't know if we've talked about this on the on the podcast before, but when it comes to like sex trafficking and like all of like human trafficking, basically, yeah, you always think that it's happening outside of your home country. You're like, right. oh, it couldn't happen here, and you don't think, and then you think it's not that huge, but you, it's fucking huge. Exactly, you don't think it's that prolific, but it actually is. It's like, and again, I'm not saying again innocent until proven guilty, but. You know, it does sound like maybe he had some people that were trafficked either at his house or maybe at his parties yep. or doing things, There's you know. There's some shady ass shit. There's a lot of shady ass shit that goes on. He's been kind of shady for a while. Yeah. This guy is not a good person. He's kind of shady. I But I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> and again, I'm not, I'm going to paint a wide brush here, but during, because, because. P. Diddy was now, he was, he's been, he was famous for a long time, but then he kind of stopped making music, I feel like, after a little yes. while. And during his like heyday of music, it was like, I feel like it was a lot of these like big sexual, over sexualization of women, right. big parties, totally. and, you know, all this stuff, which again, I'm not justifying this, but I think that's where a lot of this might have happened. And th- there was also an incident where he dated j-lo or yeah. they were married or right. engaged or yeah. something many many years ago yeah and i remember there was some kind of like incident with a gun at i don't know if he club. shot somebody at yeah. a nightclub so that also happened he's been in a lot of kind of law mm. non-abiding situations yeah and so when this came out i was surprised but not surprised yeah. i was kind of like okay p diddy kind of kind of checks out yeah i mean it's fucking sad i don't know exactly what happened mm-hmm and it's and it and I think again, like it's just yeah, that's that that's Cassie. So like, were they? Oh yeah, former they boyfriend. Dated. I didn't know yeah. that they dated. Mm-hmm. God damn. But again, it's like it, all of this. So that's one of the. So he's facing a lot of uh, charges. Potential charges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's more stuff coming out too about how like, and this was around, I remember I saw like a clip or a story about Justin Bieber as well in this and how, how like when he was like 14 and not just Diddy though, or like, and some other people, but it was like how inappropriate they were being with Justin Bieber in terms of like, this was like a really young kid that they were like, he was like encouraging him to like, you know, be involved with certain things when he was young. He had a close relationship with pop star Justin Bieber Mm -hmm. and viral videos recently emerged featuring a teenage Justin Bieber. So I guess in the video, the rapper, so Diddy, can be seen approaching teen Justin Bieber, who's seeing Korea had just taken off. And he said, what's up, man? You good? Diddy asked Justin, selling out arenas and everything and starting to act different, huh? You haven't been calling me and hanging out the way that we used to hang out, he adds. And then Bieber, who can be seen clearly stumbling and stuttering in his voice replies, I mean, you tried to get in contact with me throughout all my projects and whatnot, but you never got my number. Is that it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The, but maybe the I video. Think more, I think there's more to it than this. Right. But they're just saying like, you know, there was stuff. There's probably more. Yeah. There's stuff going on in that, in that too. It's not that he like did anything yeah. directly to Justin. It's just like there was allegations that he was probably 
in coercing Justin sure. to get involved with things that right. you know we what don't I mean? know like, exactly we don't actually know exactly. and Justin Bieber you know he was in the in Hollywood from when he was like what 15 16 yeah. which is so fucked and like yeah there's all these videos these new videos that have been emerging where it's so crazy sometimes like maybe back in the day we thought this was like all normal behavior yeah but basically, it's like this kid and all these, you know, women, you know, are throwing themselves at him. Very sexual comments. Yeah. These grown ass women that are like 10 plus years older than him. And he's like fucking 16. Yeah. And he looks like a child he as looks well. Like a he looks like a fucking child. And they're just making all these like sexual comments. And, um, yeah, it's kind of like it's fucked up. Mm. So, you know, a lot of th- the thing is, I've always kind of like felt bad for Justin Bieber, not like fully bad. Yeah. But people always like, you know, we're like, oh, my God, he's an asshole. He's this. And I'm like, well, first of all, he's been in the limelight since he was like fucking 15 years old. Well, You're going to be an asshole or something. <laughs> exactly. And and one of the things and we actually talked about this the other day or whatever. But one of the things that this story highlights and I think is going to continue to happen. But look at in the last, I don't know. 10 years or so how many mm-hmm. of these creepy motherfucking stories have come to surface yeah. of sexual allegations like uh you know there was uh bill crosby there was um fuck what was the guy i can't remember the guy in the uk there was uh so Har- many incidents. harvey weinstein and there was like just so many jeffrey there was epstein jeffrey epstein all of these people it's like taking advantage men m- more so taking advantage in positions of power and taking advantage in the, indus- in the industry. like I don't understand. You can have normal sex, people. I know. I know. <laughs> like, but it, but it, it's... I, 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 it's uh, a power trip. 100%. It's a, but the thing... Like, what's crazy is like... I don't know. If you're a big shot in Hollywood, you could probably get most women to consensually have sex with you. Yeah. So what are you doing? You know? Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Is it too much of a... Is it too easy? Like, what is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't fucking understand. It's crazy. And you just, it's just that industry. There's it's a lot so seedy. of seedy shit that, that we probably aren't even at the surface of it. I know. You know. Uh, oh yeah. We don't know anything. We were talking to you about the, like Amanda Bynes stuff as well. Oh yeah. Amanda Bynes. What the like, fuck is going on? Oh yeah. And the Nickelodeon documentary, yes. which I haven't watched because I'm freaked out by it. But basically this new documentary came out, which kind of exposes. It's on Netflix. It might be, but like okay. people have been watching it. Oh God, I'm going to watch it. Don't get high, Daniel, when you watch it. Okay? Oh, I don't want to. Okay. But it's basically <sighs> exposing some, because Nickelodeon is like basically kid actors. It's yeah. like a child's show, child's thing, right? Yeah. What is it even like? It's like a child's media. Like a child, per, like it produces yeah. content for, for exactly. children. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's seemingly innocent. But of course, it's not mm-hmm. because we're talking about Hollywood. Yeah. So essentially, I guess all of these, uh, you know, kids are coming out and saying, okay, well, I got abused this way and this happened yeah. and all these crazy things. And then Amanda Bynes, who used to be this like bubbly, mm. happy, go lucky child actor. Now, if you see her now, like she's, I don't know what's going on, but she's not okay. I almost feel like children up before 18, like, there needs to be a lot more scrutiny. Like I'm not saying Absolutely. that I'm not saying that they can't be in the limelight, but like the issue is like you see all these like people that became child stars or were yes. were child stars and then aren't famous anymore, or were child stars and are still famous. And like almost like I I don't know. I don't know what the percentage is, yeah. guys. Maybe it's lower than like but but it's probably it, above fifty percent. Yeah. And it's like so many of them have had a plethora of challenges, issues, yeah. substance abuse because of what happened to them yeah. during that time, right? Like, yeah. and I, I just feel like, you know. Uh, and even if they got, they're fine now, most of them had to go through all kinds oh, yeah. of shit. Drew Barrymore, she seems fine now, but she's gone through all kinds of shit. Yeah. Uh, Macaulay Culkin seems to, to be in a better place. Yeah. He's like married to Brenda Song or whatever. They have a kids and they seem to be doing well. Yeah. But again, he stepped out. He probably did a lot of work. In between, he was struggling a bit. Yeah. Um, and then like all of these child actors, it's like Lindsay Lohan, Lindsay Lohan, who has a new movie. Apparently, did you see that? I haven't seen it yet. (laughs) I don't think I'm going to watch it. I know. Like, I feel like she's been in these like really cheesy cheesy films, but like cheesy beyond cheese, like almost like a Hallmark movie. Yes. Like she was in another one that I saw came up too. I think she's been in two recently. Like, why is it so Hallmarky? One of them. One of them was like, because I saw the preview on Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of them was about this, like she plays this rich person that like falls on her skis and like yes. loses her mind and like was it know. like a Christmassy movie yeah that, that yeah one. i saw that They're, they both seem very similar the two yeah. movies that she's in now then the other one is 
she she goes to her best friend's wedding or something and then she dreams that she's marrying him and then right. all of a sudden she's marrying him i'm like what the fuck is going on like are you just saying yes to everything oh, at this point oh god i think she might be like it, it her also her trajectory like it was really sad because that period of time because you go back and watch those films and she was so good. She was so good. Like, she was such she like she was such a star. She just had that that quality about her. Like no matter what, like even when she was like, you know, you look at Mean Girls, which is like a perfect example. Even when she's there with some heavy hitters like Rachel McAdams. Sure. Um oh, fuck. To be fair, at the time, I think Lindsay Lohan was more famous than yeah, she Rachel was. McAdams. She yeah. was. That that was the breakout for a lot of those, yeah, those yeah, stars. Yeah. But even even in that room with them, she is she like Sean. So good, yeah. You know, and oh god. I know. And there was like the parent trap. There was like confessions of a teenage drama yeah, queen right, or something. Right. <laughs> Freaky Friday. Parent trap. Oh, what yeah. a movie. I love that movie. Freaky Friday was another one that she did. Like there was just so like and every one that she did was like so good. And then it just God, it's, yeah. I mean, child yeah. actors, I'm telling you. Yeah. Not a good idea. The I saw this video of uh remember Malcolm in the Middle? Yeah. What's the guy's name? I can't remember. The, the main guy. The, the Malcolm. One in Malcolm. I can't remember either. Anyway, he, because he actually, he's probably one of the very few that kind of like left unscathed. Yeah. Because they, Malcolm in the Middle ran for quite a few seasons. True. And then he like, and then he made all his money. Mm. And then he's like, fuck this, I'm retiring. Yeah. And then I think he got into like, not, I don't know, like car racing or something. And he, right. you know, he probably had so much money that he probably like invested some of it. And he's just like, you know, living his best life. Right. And he did this video where he was like, um, maybe someone was interviewing him and basically he probably has kids now. Oh, Frankie Muniz. That's yes, his name. Frankie Muniz. Yeah, that's so the like one. he probably has kids now or something. He's like, Yeah, I would I would not like want my kids uh, I wouldn't put my kids into like show business. Even though yeah. he's like, I had a like pretty positive experience. Yeah. But most people I know like haven't. I think a lot of it and like again, I don't want to mm-hmm. trash people's parents, but like yeah, yeah, I do feel like as well. a lot of the time because there's a co- there's some others, like Hillary Duff, she seems like one that what came yeah, out relatively she seems unscathed. To be, yeah, sure. Like things like that. And I think if you have and I don't know what her parents are like, but like I feel like if you have more of a solid sure. parental Support thing, because I think yeah, with, totally. with Lindsay Lohan, do you remember her mom was like yeah, yeah, yeah. also all over the place? Yeah. Well, the thing is, yeah. if you have, if you're a child star, more likely than not, your parents are going to be questionable. Like, like what do they call them? Like dance moms or something? Or, yes, you know? like exactly. Really like, go, go, go. My exactly. child's a star. Exactly. It's like, or they want it to be famous. So mm. they're pushing that onto their kids. Yeah. They're not really thinking about their kids' well-being. Yeah. More likely than not, that's probably the scenario. Yeah. Because most sane people that care about their kids probably wouldn't even go there in the first place. Exactly. Or, or they would just have like a fun acting thing yes. and not getting like so serious mm-hmm. into the craziness. But like even like, like Britney Spears' parents. Oh, ugh, they're like... The, ugh. Like, I know. I rest my case. I know. What about Olsen twins? What do I think about that? Oh, God. That was also an interesting case. They went through they some They fascinate stuff. me. Yeah. Because they were like famous from, they were like fucking not even one year old. Like from, because yeah. Full House, right? Because they were on Full House when they were yeah. babies. But then they were also, when they were in their early like young years. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did like tons before of- Before 10. Yeah, before 10. Yeah. They, they did all these like movies. They and, were like, so famous. They made huge. so much money. And then they were like, as teenagers, they still had some roles. Yeah. And they probably could have kept going, but then they started doing like fashion, fashion and, stuff, and yeah. then their fashion line became like super fucking Huge. popular. And now they're just like fashion fucking mm. superstars. They don't even want to touch, you know, uh, acting, I yeah. think. And they're kind of like totally over it. And they're just like living this like mysterious, life. glamorous life. Yeah. God damn. I always say with the older I get, the more I realize that like, I don't want to be so, yep, so in this, so the limelight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think, the nice thing is like doing something. I mean, obviously they're still in the limelight and stuff, but you know, if you create like a successful business mm-hmm. or something like this, you can still have like mm-hmm. some of the monetary success yes. and the fun that comes with that without having the like public scrutiny. Exactly. So I think that's the best way. Like the people that are like the secret billionaires, yep. you know, not saying that I want to be a billionaire. Right? There's, <laughs> there's a lot of shit wrong with billionaires, but like, you know, like, let's say I was a millionaire, you know, Liv- yeah. living my best life, traveling. I could get on a, any plane I wanted. I no one would know me. I know. I could go to the resort and do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. And be be a drunk mess and exactly. no one's going to care. Like I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. That. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with Diddy. Okay. Uh, Diddy or did, Diddy not? <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> that's the question. Diddy? <laughs> or Diddy not? Okay. <laughs> like I, I'm not kidding you guys. I never realized that until <laughs> just this moment. <laughs> And it kills me. <laughs> it kills me. Damn. So the world's coming to an end. So of course we have to finish with a doom and gloom story. A positive one. 
Fertilizer killed more than 750,000 fish in Iowa and miser- misery. Mis- <laughs> Where'd well, you, where'd you get that from, Rose? Know, that was a Freudian slip that there. <laughs> Missouri. Ah. Jesus Christ. I mean, it does sound like misery. Missouri. I mean, the story is a bit miserable. It is miserable. Um, so basically what had happened was there was a fertilizer spell. Um, and again, that just like obviously contaminated the water. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not laughing at this because mm, this is yeah. terrible, but it killed nearly all the fish. Okay, guys. Oh my God. In a 60 mile stretch of river. And the thing is, that's just the ones they know about, right? They don't know the downstream effects. Yeah. You know, like what's going to happen mm-hmm. later? Like, have they got it all out of the river? Is yeah. it because the rivers all is flow into the fuck ocean? Up all the future fish. Exactly. Is there going to be some kind of like chemical components that are lingering in the plants? Yeah. Like, or have all the plants been killed? And it is crazy. I mean, and the thing is, it's like this kind of shit is just going to... This is what I mean by humans are a parasite to this planet, mm. which is why I find it funny when people are like, it's our moral duty to continue to, to procreate. procreate. Listen, I'm not saying... I'm not like an anti-natalist, but mm. that's not really a fucking argument. Yeah. Just to continue the human race. Okay, what's so fucking great about the human race? Exactly. We're and killing does- 750,000 fish just from one fucking spill. Exactly. And why does it need to continue? Like, what Exactly. What's the reasoning? Exactly. Like, What's it- your reasoning? It- and is it... Look at the history of the planet Earth. Things do not continue in perpetu- Ex- perpetuity. Exactly. Exactly. That's another thing. It's like if we get to a point where the human population diminishes, mm-hmm. then, well, that's just the way it is. Exactly. And that's the natural part yeah. of life. We're going to go extinct and some other species is going to come in and fuck it up for the exactly. rest of the people. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, there's no obligation or need. And no guarantee to exactly. continue the human race. Like, I don't understand this. Anyway, we need to procreate because they ju- he just doesn't want to be an insail, you know, mm-hmm. or he-, he just wants to have sex. Okay. That's what he wants. He just wants to fucking put some sperm in there. God damn. Anyway, it's scary because it like, you know, especially with a lot of the like legislation and stuff getting passed and more so in oh the U.S. God. Then we have these conservative extremists that are like like men that are like, oh, and like, you know, if the women are going to do this 4B movement, well, then you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to impregnate them. Oh, God, that's so fucked up. Like, it's fucked up, Rose. Like, it really, like, threw uh, me for a oh loop. Oh, I know you got really freaked out Thank there. God I'm not stoned right now. I'm just, You'll be I'm just spiraling. Trying to think, like, if we got to that point, we're back in this topic. Anyway, so fish are dead, so fucking yeah. hallelujah. The, the, um, I mean, the result, widespread annihilation. The leak happened on the weekend, mm, March 9th to 11th, in an area where the fertilizer was disturbed. And, uh, uh, yeah, anyway. Anyways, so what were we saying? We were just saying. Oh, yeah. So if... Let's say we got to a point where women, the 4B movement spread yeah. across the world. Yeah. Very few women are, you know, participating in activities with men. Right. And we started developing women only societies. Mm. That's probably what's going to end up women, happening. Women and gays. Girls and gays. Yeah. <laughs> the girls and gays. Absolutely. We The gays are always included. Yes. So girls and gays, mm-hmm. we're, we're developing these societies. And I just feel like. It would be a great society. It would be. And the thing is, if like the men... I don't think they can be as a collective organized enough. Exactly. <laughs> the inability to plan <laughs> is a real thing, which is again, why I am fascinated mm. that they were able to rule the world. But again, that's on the backs of women, mm-hmm. but w- without the women, the inability to plan would not allow them to develop a handmaid's tale. This is why I'm not as scared as you. Yeah. Cause it's like, <laughs> How the fuck are they go- going to develop a handmaid's tale sort of situation? They can, they can barely clean the house and cook for themselves. <laughs> let alone organize this a mass I mean. thing that exactly. they're going to... Exactly. So I'm, I'm less concerned. And have you heard ab- about that s- experiment? I don't know where I heard this. Maybe you told me this. Mm. I can't remember. But basically, they did this experiment where they put a bunch of boys... I think they were like kids. Mm. Boys in one house. Girls in one house. And they basically were like, figure it out. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the boys very soon... It was carnage. <laughs> fucking, they're fighting. They can't figure shit out. Nothing's fucking in place. Everything's fucked up. Girls very soon started developing like systems. a plan. Yeah. Systems. We're going to cook. You're going to clean. Yeah. They like fucking figured it all out. So this is what I mean. Okay. The boys, it'll be a Lord of the Fly situation. Oh, God damn. <laughs> and on that positive note, <laughs> thank you. Guys, we do not hate men. Just yeah. FYI. Just some. <laughs> we just thank some men. Uh, could step it up. Yes, this is this is the big it's thing. It's a society issue. Again, I don't think that we need to go to these extremes. We but, don't. But 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 what it's proving is that m- ultimately men 
guys, you need to step it up. You need to start doing your share in the house. You need to start treating women with respect. Like let's treat everybody with respect guys. And again, and it's also, it's also not just a men's fault kind of situation. It's Mm -hmm. more of like a misogynistic patriarchal society issue, right? Because women are also complicit in this, exactly, right? Like we're also participating in this societal structure. Mm. So we all need to like figure out ways of, I think we, we all need to adjust. Like the mm-hmm. thing is society, whether we like it or not has changed mm-hmm. and we cannot rest on our laurels and use the fundamentals that were developed that were, when it was a time, maybe our grandparents generation, maybe before that, that, and I don't even want to say it worked because it didn't work well because you know, again, there was a lot of things that went on that weren't great, but it's shifted and we need to figure out a way that we work together to make this work for everybody mm-hmm. and not have in cells and not have you know people 4B, 4B movement. movements and all this shit it's like no 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 we need to work yeah, this together is not good for anybody to figure this out right mm-hmm. like you know because you know think. girls want to have sex too exactly everyone wants to have sex yeah. having having 4B and in cells and people yeah. and all this stuff, no one's like, happy no one's happy <laughs> no one's Every- getting laid everyone's sexually frustrated no wonder everyone's <laughs> angry and on that positive <laughs> note, thank you so much for listening, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Mm-hmm. Definitely check out our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Once again, it's bonus episode every single month. You get ad free content every episode a week earlier than everybody else. So make sure you join. It's patreon.com slash the savage podcast. I hope yes. you enjoyed Daniel's little dance mm-hmm. there. If you're watching on YouTube, mm-hmm. speaking of YouTube, uh, check out our YouTube guys. Uh, give this video a thumbs up leave some comments and show us some love in the comment section down below and of course subscribe to this channel if you're not already also if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platforms don't forget to hit that follow button because then you get updated as soon as new content goes live have an amazing week you guys and we will see you next week bye bye